Welcome to Deciphering Digital Security. In this episode, we're going to be looking at cross-site request forgeries. You'll often hear cross-site request forgeries referred to as CSERFs, CSRFs, or even XSRFs in penetration test reports. Unlike cross-site scripting, which exploits the trust a user has for a website, cross-site request forgeries exploit the trust a website has for a user. In order for this to work, it requires the victim user to have a valid session on the target application. Let's take a look at CSRF in action. The attack takes a bit of planning. First of all, the attacker must observe or make a very clever guess of the format of the request the target application is expecting. Once the attacker has this information, they can create a malicious request in exactly the right format. In the following demo, we're going to be using the Burp Suite proxy tool to observe the request from the user's browser. This is for clarity only and doesn't actually form part of the attack, although using a proxy is a great way for an attacker or pen tester to learn how an application works. On the left of your screen, you can see a payroll management page from our vulnerable application. To the right, you can see our proxy server. This is configured to trap the request from the user so that we can observe them. Let's try making a request from our browser to the app. We'll make a simple change to the bonus amount on this person's employee profile. As soon as we hit the submit button on the form, the request is trapped for us in the proxy. The proxy shows us that the request is an HTTP POST request to the PHP page updateprofile.php. You can also see the user's session cookie containing a session ID. This is how our application knows the user that it's working with. Remember this, it will be useful later. Finally, we can see the POST data. The POST data is a long string of field names and values that we're passing to the application in our request. Hitting the forward button on our proxy, we release the request to the app. Our browser then makes a couple more calls to complete the transaction and navigate us back to the landing page for the payroll system. You can see that our employee's bonus amount has increased as a result of the form submission. So now we can see how our application works under normal circumstances. Let's demonstrate how we can use a CSRF to forge requests to our application. In this scenario, Dolores, one of our developers, decides they want to trick the payroll system into adjusting their bonus amount using a CSRF to make it look as if the change was made by a payroll administrator. The developer hides some CSRF code in another application and waits for our payroll admin to pay a visit. If you look to the left of the screen, you can see the code that the developer has added. Essentially, it's an HTML form with completely hidden inputs and pre-populated values. The action value on the form is a call to the same update payroll.php file that we saw earlier. We should also notice that the bonus value has been set to 15,000, way more than this user's current bonus. Towards the end of the code, we can see some JavaScript, which will submit this form automatically. So now, let's play the role of the payroll administrator. We're visiting the other application with the hidden CSRF code. Of course, we have no idea that it's there. Still with our proxy enabled, you can see the standard get request to this host that's made by the victim's browser. If we forward that request, a second request is made. Take a look. The request is a post request to the update payroll.php file. The host name is the host name of our victim application. And because we have a session cookie set with this host, our request includes the session ID. The unique token the application uses to confirm that we are an authorized user. Finally, we see the post data string, which includes our new bonus figure. We forward this request on in the proxy to allow it to complete. As the application flow completes, we'll return to the payroll landing page. The result? Dolores now has an increased bonus thanks to a cross-site request forgery. Let's recap how that worked. First of all, the victim made a request to the attacking application. The attacking app returned some code, including the CSRF portion. Finally, this triggered a forged request to our victim application, which was associated with the session cookie. This happened thanks to this piece of code, a hidden HTML form and a simple bit of JavaScript. So how do we prevent cross-site request forgery scenarios like this one? First of all, we should ensure that every form submission in our application requires some sort of random token that is impossible for an attacker to predict. 
Secondly, for any transaction that may be considered sensitive, we should request that the user re-authenticates before we complete the submission. This should include any kind of financial transaction. Finally, always make sure that session cookies expire. More sensitive applications should use a shorter session expiry time. We just covered cross-site request forgeries, an attack mechanism that exploits the trust a site has for a user. We demonstrated a cross-site request forgery using a forged post request. Finally, we looked at some tips on cross-site request forgery prevention.